everyone. Um, welcome to this first business meeting of the uh, Communist Party uh, National Committee. Um, welcome uh, one and all. We're just trying to get everybody here in New York to take a seat. Um, Gabe and Mike, Carol, please take a seat. Um, Scott, you can start uh, the uh, live stream after I introduce Carol. Sorry, the uh, stream okay. started, Joe. Sorry. The stream started? Yeah. Okay, that's great. Well, welcome also to um, uh, all of you who have joined us uh, in the uh, Facebook world. And uh, welcome to everybody also from the uh, uh, YouTube uh, world. Um, I want to uh, begin by uh, um, taking a, a roll call. Let's, uh, no, let's wait. We'll do that uh, after the completion of uh, the introductory report. I wanna organize the meeting first uh, and I'd like to propose uh, two chairpersons. First, uh, Comrade Carroll from uh, New York for the first session. Um, and uh, second, uh, Comrade Lisa from New Haven uh, for the second part of the uh, uh, meeting. Is there a, a second to the chairs? Second. Second. Okay, any discussion? Can we have a little vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Aye. So, Aye. So, Aye. so, so ordered. Um, I do. We have a three point agenda. Uh, the first point is the uh, keynote. Um, the second point will be an organization report from Osana. The third point will be a report on a convention evaluation. And then lastly, we'll have an update from uh, on the work on the uh, party program. I'd like to ask everybody uh, to mute. Um, wherever you are, uh, please, if you're on a phone, click on the uh, mute button. If you're on a computer, please click on the microphone. Otherwise, uh, we, uh, we'll, you'll interrupt the uh, meeting. So please uh, click uh, and make sure that, um, and Scott, if you see anyone who is not muted, please mute them uh, because we don't want the uh, meeting to be interrupted. Um, with that, and uh, without further ado, I wanna introduce Carol who will run the meeting. Carol. Thank you, Joe. Okay. okay, thank you. Uh, comrades, uh, good morning to the comrades uh, out on the West Coast and good afternoon, one and all, to all the other comrades. Um, <clears throat> thank you so much for allowing me to chair this part of the meeting. Um, I, uh, as Joe said, we have um, three points. And the first one is uh, Joe giving the um, the keynote. Um, we uh, the agenda has to be adopted. Or... Okay. The um, the other points are Rosanna with an organizational point and D uh, with the convention um, assessment. Um, so, is there a motion to adopt or any other cha uh, additions to the agenda or changes or comments? Is there a motion to adopt this agenda? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, the, so the agenda is uh, officially adopted. And uh, we'd like to um, propose that we limit the comments to three minutes each for discussion time. Um, is there a motion to adopt this three minutes? Is okay with everyone? Thank you. All right, so move three minutes for the discussion. Um, <clears throat> And then, uh, so we can start. So yes, I present Joe, thank you, Joe, with their, our keynote for this uh, NC meeting, the first one since the, uh, since the convention. So a very important meeting. Welcome again, and Joe, take it away. 
Thank you and uh, Carol very much. And once again, um, on uh, behalf of Rosanna Cambrone and myself, I wanna welcome everybody to uh, this meeting of the National Committee. I heard that New Haven and Houston and LA and Chicago um, and uh, Philadelphia, um, Baltimore is here, uh, Minneapolis is uh, here, DC is here, um, Florida uh, is in the uh, house. I'm sure uh, I forgot somebody. Um, and whenever you start naming people and you forget somebody, somebody gets their feelings hurt. So please know that my intention was to include every, everyone in this, uh, in this uh, welcome. Um, you know, comrades, our national committee meeting is uh, uh, taking place at an extraordinary moment. Now for only the fourth time in the history of the United States, a president faces impeachment. Um, and you know what? This is a huge, uh, in my opinion, people's victory. And let's be clear, it is a victory born of struggle. The American people from many, many different walks of life compelled the House of Representatives to take this step. It may not be the impeachment that some of us wanted, um, but that's okay. Rarely uh, are we, the workers and people, able to determine uh, the battlefield on which we fight. The important thing, I think, is that the people demanded it. And that's because the people understand that the main struggle and the defining issue of our times is the fight to remove Trump and the Republican Party from office. Nothing could be more important. We are living, y'all, in, uh, uh, in a broad um, democratic and anti-right-wing moment. It is at once uh, an anti-racist and uh, and an anti-sexist moment. We saw that in the women's marches, right? We saw it uh, in Charlottesville um, and in Charlottesville's aftermath. And we see it on the picket lines of today's strike wave. We saw it in the eyes of young people marching um, against gun violence, like what happened in California just a couple of days ago. And we saw it in the uh, young people and their families marching against climate change in the youth climate strike. And we saw it again in Kentucky and in Virginia just a couple of weeks ago, the march uh, to the ballot box that began in last year's midterms uh, is continuing. Ain't no doubt about that. Yes, this is a moment for defending democracy. And that is so huge, you know, because only through defending democracy does it become possible to expand it. And one of the hallmarks of this moment is that the people are demanding that democracy be expanded. And that's why issues like the right to health care and Medicare for all, along with the right to a job and a Green New Deal are resonating so very broadly. And that is why uh, in the midst of this anti-right and uh, democratic uh, moment, we said in the national board a few months ago uh, that it is also a socialist moment. Um, a socialist moment because people are becoming more and more radicalized and drawing deeper and deeper conclusions about the system. You know, this socialist moment should not be understood narrowly. No, that I think would be a big mistake. Instead, the socialist moment should be understood broadly as an as a affirmative affirmation, an expression of hope, a, a reaching for a positive solution, an expansion of democracy that brings forward the economic and social rights of the people 
Just take, for example, the proposal for a basic universal basic income that's being put forward by one of the presidential uh, contenders in the Democratic primary, uh, Mr. Yang. You know, that's the kind of thing that is moving in that direction. And Scotty pointed out that at our recent uh, board meeting. Look at it this way. We all need something uh, positive to fight for, something to say yes to. Uh, yes, we can. Si, si, puede. Yes, we can make real change. And that is why Bernie's campaign and AOC's victory has generated such a conversation in our country. Um, and if you think about it, it is a conversation about socialism 2.0 about what socialism will look like in our country. Now, some say it is not our vision of socialism, right? But that's okay too. Um, it is a, uh, in that respect, uh, it's a door. It's a window of opportunity for us to add to and deepen the conversation. Perhaps we should call it a moment of socialist opportunity. Let's discuss it. And so as we join the fight around impeachment and in the upcoming election campaign, let's take the opportunity to have that conversation. Look, impeachment will be at the center of struggle for the next several weeks uh, until the Senate trial and vote. Uh, we should actively uh, join in that fight. How? By, for example, taking a lesson from uh, college students in the South who at a recent football game uh, spelled out impeach Trump now <laughs> on their jerseys, right? Each one taking a, a letter. Or by the other young people who in another place in the country hung a impeach Trump banner um, on a highway overpass. Or um, like uh, Scott Hiley uh, told me the other day in upstate New York, he ran uh, into a, a, a jogger in a bright green jogging outfit, right? That had impeached Trump blazing on the front and the uh, back. Or by joining in the upcoming demonstrations and rallies uh, of the people's movement, we should send letters to the editor circulate memes online, share articles from the people's world and cpusa.org and other sources. Uh, the point here is that we should work with others to create a groundswell of activity around impeachment. And, you know, uh, what's happening in the house cannot be left to the politicians alone. They need the support and pressure from below. By working in this way, we can create an atmosphere of a workers and people's impeachment. The hearings in the House are sure to have an impact <coughs> and don't let nobody tell you anything different. They will reveal basic issues around US imperialist foreign policy, around Trump and Giuliani's corruption, on the abuse of power, uh, uh, extortion, uh, and bribery. They will also point to the influence of uh, the alt-right, and I mean that by the fascist uh, and KKK forces are, uh, around the presidency, because it was they who led that campaign to oust the ambassador from the Ukraine. Just think about that. These revelations will undoubtedly change people's minds as the election campaign heats up in January. And as the election heats up, we have to make it in this party our top priority by, coming, by becoming involved in the campaigns in every way possible, by working in the organizations to which we belong, by joining in campaigns at the local level, uh, continually raising issues, and organizing with our mass media. Already at the urging of our political action commission and comrade Joel, uh, we have been circulating a voter pledge, asking our members and friends to get involved, uh, make a promise to vote and to organize other people to vote. There will soon be an online version of that uh, for use uh, 
by email and social media. Voter registration is also a valuable way of getting out on the street uh, and uh, involving the working class public. And we got to get out on the street and involve the working class public. You know, I came to work on Veterans Day and on my way home, I ran into the Democratic Party, you know, out on the street, uh, circulating uh, petitions, uh, supporting various candidates. I ran into a woman down on Second Avenue and First uh, Street um, who was trying to uh, get a uh, recognition, a street name for a guy that desegregated churches down there. You know, even uh, I ran into a kooky outfit whose name I won't reveal because I don't want to give them any publicity. And the question uh, that that raised to me was why wasn't I out there, you know? And I hadn't even thought about it, but Veterans Day was a day, you know, for people to be out, to shop, uh, to march, and to honor the veterans, but also to engage in political activity. And that is what this party needs to do more and more of. With respect to the Democratic campaigns, our approach has always been that we don't endorse candidates from other parties, right? But that we work to build unity around the issues. And it is for this reason that in this current socialist and progressive moment that we welcome the candidacy of Sanders and Warren and the other women labor oriented uh, people of color and LGBTQ candidates. Where we are able, we should get involved with local campaigns and after the Democratic Party convention, the national campaign to defeat Trump uh, and flip the GOP districts. How to get involved is important. And here we wanna emphasize the need to hook up with local uh, uh, campaigns uh, organized by central labor bodies and by grassroots organizations, as opposed to uh, the national campaigns. And that's because the national campaigns come in, they do their thing and leave. But if you can get involved with local efforts, with central labor bodies and grassroots movements, you can begin to build relationships that you can continue to work on <coughs> after the campaign is uh, over. We should also, and this is really important, wherever possible, work towards fielding our own candidates at the local level. This can be running party candidates can be a vital means of exposing the right danger of building political independence and building uh, the party. Um, you know, we just got a uh, young man, Wasea ran for the city council in Wisconsin. That was the first thing he did. And the second thing he did was organize a party club. You know, it can be, it can be a way of building our organization. And so all such efforts, of course, should be broadly based uh, grassroots as uh, possible. <coughs> I wanna say a few words about the party itself. You know, Comrade, since the convention, we have been working hard to consolidate its achievements and implement convention decisions. And we're happy to say that that process is largely complete. We successfully organized regional events around the 100th anniversary in September and have been on the picket lines of the GM, the steelworkers strike out there in uh, Arizona, the grocery workers in Connecticut and other strikes. We joined in the youth climate strike in several parts of the country. And the Labor Commission, uh, along with the PW, just held a very successful regional meeting in North Carolina. We're happy to report that other commissions and collectives are up and running, um, with the exception of one that is supposed to be working on our communist youth project, but we are very committed to uh, making that happen. The peoples.world.org is steadily building readership they just came back from the uh, 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 labor press conference in DC from which they won 
I think 14 or 15 awards uh, and to which we give our congratulations. The party website is up and running. And most importantly, we are continuing to grow with some 390 members since June, three new clubs and 14 others in the process of uh, forming. In other words, comrades, the party <coughs> is set, primed and ready to play the role that we need to play in working to advance the goals we set ourselves at the convention to defeat Trump, to help build the broader movement for uh, democracy and socialism uh, and to build this party. And that is just what we're going to do. The convention tasked this national committee with overseeing that process and each and every member of this body should think about our individual responsibility as a party leader in thinking through and helping achieve our goals and objectives. In other words, we need to think over what it means to be a member of the National Committee as the leading body of the party and what it means to be a member of this collective. And you know, there are two concepts of leadership uh, in our society, a working class concept and a capitalist concept. The capitalist concept emphasizes the individual. It focuses on being on top, on directing, on bossing, on ego. Working class concept stresses the collective, cooperation, assistance, support, solidarity, in the capitalist approach to leadership, the individual is exalted over everything and everyone else. The working class and socialist concept, while recognizing and uh, valuing each person, and we do, also acknowledges, accepts, and fights for the wisdom of the collective. The capitalist concept, without a doubt, has influence in our ranks. You know what I mean? I mean, uh, in a bourgeois world such as ours, how could it be otherwise? It is expressed in know-it-allness, in dominating conversations and not listening and bragging and blaming others and refusing to abide by and work within collective structures. It also takes the form of meddling in others' affairs and making decisions for others without consulting. But we don't make decisions for others without consulting. We do not have bosses in the Communist Party. We do not give orders and direct people what to do. Our party is a voluntary organization and decision-making is based on consent, founded uh, on collective uh, discussion and democratic uh, voting. But for this process to work, each and every member of the leadership must participate. And participate means attending meetings. It means listening. Uh, it means engaging uh, in a give and take. And it means compromising. It cannot be my way or the highway. In this NC, each of us should reflect on how we can contribute, how we can assist, uh, how we can lead in a working class and revolutionary way. And to the extent that we do that, we will help uh, build and help lead a political force to be reckoned with. One which is capable of assisting the working class movement and transforming society. But let us remember to transform society, we need to work to transform ourselves. And that means, um, uh, developing a, a introspective, uh, self-critical capacity. It means taking a personal inventory of what we have done right and what we have uh, done wrong and what we can do uh, better. That too is a big part of being a working class leader. Before I end, I, I wanna say just a few words about the role of our party um, and the uh, working class uh, as put forward in our program, which will be produced and sent out in uh, short order. It's a, it's a hell of a thing, uh, you know, profound really. 
our concept, the notion that the working class is our center of political gravity, that not just another list um, arranged in a coalition, the idea that it is the mover and shaker, the concept that fighting for its independent role, its political independence in the struggle will determine the course of events, the idea that it must become the leading political, intellectual, and cultural force. These are huge ideas and ones that are continually challenged. And here I'm reminded that regarding these kinds of issues, you know, you can't take anything for granted, particularly among our new members, but, all, but not only. There's an ongoing need to go back to basics and not just by restating old truisms, but by taking account of what is new and what is changing. There are ongoing questions about who the working class is today. And even as one uh, young leader of the trade union movement said to me recently, even the future of work what with automation and robotics, big data and so on and so forth and related our strategies and tactics needed to organize these workers and, and uh, to organize the broader response. And even when we talk about the working class uh, in this way, we don't do it narrowly. And we don't do it in isolation from other social forces and their struggles. I'm talking about people of color, women, LGBTQ, uh, movements around climate change, gun violence. And these are independent movements that play a big role in the struggle. And if you want to talk about revolution, and we do, you've got to engage with them and be part of these movements. And one more thing, we don't talk about the working class and these issues in isolation from the main issues of the day, like impeachment. What we say is that we want to bring forward a working class, anti-racist, anti-sexist, anti-homophobic positions to these struggles. And that means connecting them to the deeper problems of the system. And it means fighting for unity on these issues. And fighting for unity means we have to take into account the special circumstances of different groups of people as they are oppressed uh, in this country. Um, and that, uh, used to be called uh, the communist plus or our added value. That's what makes us unique. And at the same time, part of the broader movement. It makes us separate and at the same time, part of the huge movements of the day. Rosanna and I feel deeply that the convention set us firmly on the path, uh, on this path. And to the degree that we stay on it, develop it, shape it, find ways around the obstacles, down the valleys, and up the hills, always looking for the new, we will surely, sooner or later, hopefully sooner, reach the summit of working class victory um, in this country. I'm talking about ascending to the mountaintop. Thanks for listening. That's it. Wow. Okay, Joe, thank you. Thank you, Joe, for your keynote, for uh, an excellent keynote, inspiring, I really think, an inspiring uh, opening to our conversation on um, now on how to further engage and expand the fight that we have ahead of us for democracy, the feet of Trump, the GOP, and for socialism. So we have to roll, the, you want to do the roll call? Yeah, and that's before we start. Scott just stop the stream. Oh, Scott, can you stop the stream now? <laughs>